but I remember seeing pictures of people in seats and uh, these like fold up chairs. And um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, you know, if, if you were a spectator, if you were someone that was there, you were like, wow, this, this place is packed for the show itself. Yeah. And I remember throughout the show. So the, the couple of highlights that stood out for me and, 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 um, you know, I, I remember Omega Phi Beta and like their opening song coming out like with a bang, like there was a smoke you, machine at Amazon. You seem to always, you seem to always remember Omega Phi Beta for some reason. Yeah, no, I mean, they were, they were a great team. And so I remember them coming out to, um, it was a Nori, a Nori song and just like blowing it out the door and like with, with corn rolls. Oh, uh, that's, know. that's the helicopter song, the Noriega, Capona Noriega helicopter. Yeah. And it, and yeah, I remember, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And they came out in fatigues. Yeah, yeah. Fatigue. They were militant. Yes. Yeah. So they were very militant. Corn rolls, uh, fatigues, and and they 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 really like left the shit. They 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 tore it up. Um, we also um, Chi Epsilon Sigma was a part of that show. They also you know had a great great performance. Um, and and it was early on for that team. I think uh, Alpha Rho Lambda. A repeat performance. Um, you know they were they were a very good team, um, and and uh, we also had uh, El Paiu as I, as we talked about um, them. I didn't remember too well, although they had a uh, 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 like if I remember correctly, they were like the the shortest physically shortest team of all time. Like they had a really crew of short girls, and then Yanira at the back who was the tall tallest. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was. It was the show lived up to the hype. I, I don't think the MCs were great at you know in retrospect. I think they probably were. Which we were is getting... which is yeah, which is fine because you know the people aren't coming for the MCs. People are coming for the performances. So you know they didn't detract from the show, which is fine. You know they you could always have an MC add to the show, which later on we we partnered with Raúl Martinez, who I I think he added to the shows, but then. With Raul, I think he just started doing so many shows that, like, you know, you just start, you know, you start mailing it in after a while. You're like, you know, you're not, you know, you don't give it, you don't give it a hundred percent. You just, yeah, you know, I'm here. This is, this is get it over with. But he was great, uh, Raul, and we'll I hope to have Raul here on interview. He's touring Latin America right now, singing his salsa. Yeah, Raul, Raul was a legend. Um, but, but, but as Ed mentioned, like the one thing the worst thing an MC can do is detract from the show. Like if they just manage the show, if they're just a game manager, like in sports, like, you know, like a quarterback who manages the game, that's okay. That's okay. In our world. If you, if you throw five touchdowns and you exceed expectation, you, you make the show better and, and you add something to the event that wasn't there. So, so there's a big opportunity for success, but it's easier to fail. So, as you mentioned, fortunately, we had game managers in place that didn't detract, and the sponsors, you know, weren't, um, you know, like they weren't as serious at that time, you know, like like in later years where they expected lead generation and they there was greater expectation from our event. So, um, why don't you explain to the listeners what lead generation is in spon in a sponsorship uh, context? Yeah, so it, it's it's. Um, so lead generation is basically expecting a return on your investment in the sense of, you know, like if I'm paying $10,000 to sponsor your show, I'm expecting at least 300 uh, signed uh, index cards, if you will, with information from event attendees to, to recruit later on. So again, if you're the U.S. Army and you pay us money, you want to come out of that event with 300 lead um, card generate, generated so that you can later prospect within that audience. So that, that's what I mean by lead gen. And um, it's uh, something that became very popular <laughs> in later events for us. So, uh, but yeah, that, that I remember. And I remember uh, from the 2001 show, um, the after party and uh, it, 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 there were a couple of uh, tangles, uh, a couple of fights, um, not, not, not like brawls, but like, I remember like loosely a few people had to get uh, removed from the venue because they were a little too inebriated and starting trouble. So, uh, but outside of that, I think, you know, this show helped establish us uh, even further. Our, our website got tremendous branding because you had them shouting out LS 
Latino set throughout? Yeah, I mean, um, no, this show definitely like took it to the next level and really started us on a path of, you know, growth and, you know, uh, always improving and bigger. We, we always wanted to do get bigger. We always wanted to have more attendance. I mean, for me personally, the goal was always to have more people attend the show to spectators than the prior year. So that was always our, our little, you know, um, the, 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 the internal goals that, 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 that we would set. I'm going to read, um, what we had on our website at the time. No, that's, that's actually another. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to read basically what, what, what we did have on latinosep.com. So it says the first show was a success and history was made. The second show was a step forward into the millennium, truly bigger, better, and hotter. Ladies and gentlemen, we take pride in introducing the third annual Latino Greek summer step and stroll show. The hot, and for some reason we have a, a TM trademark, on Latino Greek Summer Step and Stroll Show, which I think we didn't legally do it. I think someone had told us that if we mail it, put it in the mail and don't open the letter, it'll be trademarked, which I don't know if that's true or not. Do you know if that's a legitimate? I don't know. No idea. All right. So we thought we trademarked it. We probably didn't. The hottest show and after party in one location ever. Participating teams. And yeah, that, that was basically what we had. So at, at what point, so all right, so in terms of the show, I never really remember the performances themselves because my role was always backstage managing that the teams got on on time. So I was the, I controlled the time, I controlled the process of the show time-wise. So my job was to get, have the show start at seven and to end at 10 and everything in between was just trying to get, make that happen. Um, so I don't remember performances a lot I because I was always just making sure that, you know, team, uh, the next team was ready to go. The MC was on stage. MC said, blah, blah, blah. And then the team was ready. So what was disastrous with these shows sometimes is that when there's a lot of chaos happening in the, in the backstage, teams get lost somehow. Like you can't find the team that's actually going on next. That was always stressful because it's like, where the fuck are these guys? You know, there's always probably the fraternities that always like disappeared. The women were very responsible as they typically are, but the guys are like, you know, they're outside smoking a cigarette or drinking a 40 ounce when they're their when their performance is like next anyway. But, um, so yeah, I don't remember the shows themselves. I just remember I, my, my job was to remember how big the crowd was, was the, was the room filled, that that's all I really cared about was the room filled and where did we start on time? Did we end on time? So yeah, that's, that's my recollection of, uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you just reminded me, I remember the Amasura venue. I didn't think about this, but they had the door that led out to the street. Like it was right there. So you could actually go from the street to the stage in like two seconds. Cause it was right there. It was connected. And so the teams, I remember seeing them lined up outside. That. But, uh, but yeah, so, so the interesting thing after that show happened is, you know, obviously our reputation was strong. It was really strong. Like I remember Urban, um, and, and we'll talk about this, like the conversations that followed the show. Um, I knew they were happy coming out of that event and like they understood that we were the real deal. Like they had heard about us to that point. They hadn't been to our event, but now they knew that we were doing something that they wanted to be a part of. And so, um, so after that show, they, they wanted to meet with us. Um, and I think because you were in Georgia flying into New York, we met with them that weekend. I want to say it might've been later, but, um, I know they were interested in having follow-up conversations. Um, who else was, uh, Oh, uh, Tony Martinez also, uh, I don't know. How did you connect with him? But like, there was, um, we started going to other step shows with him through our connection. Do you yeah. Um, I don't rem I, I, well, I, the only thing I remember with Tony was, uh, Ruben introducing us. And then I don't remember, I think I would, I just think that when, when I spoke with him and we, when we, had, when we, we were talking like he was, since he was older and he was doing like, he, a, he was older, B, he was in a fraternity and then C, he was running a company, a media company. So he understood kind of a little bit about stepping, strolling. So he, he knew that world. And um, 
what else? Uh, so me and him would stay in touch. And I think I, I kind of used him as a, um, for advice, basically. I, 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 and, and yes, I don't know where, what point, when do you want to want me to get into that, to that story, Jesus? The... Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, that's, this is a good, good segue in. So, um, so as a sounding board, he probably was our first advisor ever, but uh, why don't you talk about, because uh, at that time, just to set this up, Latino Greeks was now marketing their events and they were doing one yeah. in Gainesville, they were doing one at the limelight, they were doing, they had different events queued up, step shows, that they were marketing to Latino Greeks. And this is outside of the US, uh, outside of the New York summer market, but it was still stepping on our toes in our in our opinion. But I remember you reaching out to Tony for guidance as to maybe what do we do next? Yeah, so basically, like Asus said, we're, we're starting to feel competition specifically with Latino Greeks. Um, and I, I felt like we needed to do something to a protect the business, protect our our brand, protect uh, what we were doing. And um, I realized that. Hold on, sorry. I realized that um, we we needed to not re retaliate isn't the right word, but we needed to protect our assets. So I, somehow I start. I was talking to Tony about something. I don't know what Martinez. And I believe he says, I asked him, I, I, you know, I, I must have mentioned, you know, Latino Greeks. And he, I, I must have asked him something to the effect of like, you know, what do we do? How do we like compete with these guys? How do we, how do we succeed and have them fail or, or something? Like, how do we win? And he was like, bro, you should basically, you should put these teams on contract. Like you are they're contractually obligated to be in your shows and then i was like wow that's actually a fucking phenomenal idea and um i spoke to jesus do you remember me bringing that conversation and do you remember the the the, the discussion okay do you remember what specifically we may have said yeah distinctly i remember and i think oh. with tony we've got to do everything in his voice because he had a very mafioso distinct so voice are you doing his voice or am i doing it why don't you do a version and i'll 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 follow all right so tony martini was tony martinez was had a, was definitely a personality what's funny about him is that he's peruano but he plays the black fraternity that in and of itself is but then for some reason he spoke like for some reason, I think some, there was something with his jaw where he wouldn't move his jaw and he would talk like, yo, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta, you can't let these motherfuckers like, think they're the shit because, you know, they're not, they're garbage, they're garbage. Uh, these Latino Greek dudes, who the fuck are they? You know, these fucking guys from California, they pledging these threats, these fucking wax threats. I don't understand. These, these guys are garbage. You can't fuck with you guys. You gotta, gotta. You put your teams on contract. That's how you do it. I, I think that's that, that that's my God. I almost don't want to do mine, but uh, that was so good. But yeah, I if it's not better than the one I did, don't do it. Okay, it's not better. It's not better, so I won't. Um, but I remember once you had that conversation with him, then you called me and you're saying, "Hey Zeus, I think we got to get these teams on contract. This is this, you know, this is the way we." We kind of keep our elbows, you know, sharp against the competition, and uh, and then uh, maybe in September of two thousand one, right before Latino Greeks had their first show in Gainesville, you, myself, and Tony, we drove down to Philadelphia together. We had a road trip where the three of us are in a car for about three hours from New York to Philly, and uh, and I remember Tony again repeating exactly what Anthony said, but really. Um, it, it was like a, a consulting and like it was free advice that was just like one of those lifelong learnings for, for me personally. Like you never know when you're going to be in a room with someone who's going to change your life. Um, and Tony did that for me, you know, in, in what he said. And because I wasn't fully convinced that we needed to contract teams. Um, even though we knew we thought it was the right thing to do, I wasn't fully convinced because it felt kind of restricting, you know, like restricting someone's freedom to do something because this is a market where you could choose pretty much. But uh, 
Sorry. I, I 1000% felt like we needed to do it. Like there was no doubt. It was like, I had no doubt in my mind. I was just like, that's how you win. You, so it's a very, from, in my mind, it was a very simple formula. If we have all the best teams in our shows uh, that can only do our, actually, we weren't restricting them. We were only restricting them to one show. Like you can't do the Latino Greek step show. You can do a thousand other ones. You just can't do theirs because they're competing with us. And if, if, if 18, the eight teams that are in our show, then if those eight teams go to do their show, then what the fuck is the difference between the shows? There is no difference, right? The way you can tell the difference between the show is that one show, Latino Step, as you can see right there, has the best eight step, the best eight teams. Latino Greeks have these, you know, B actors, B teams that who the fuck don't even know what they're doing. Like, that's how you, that's how an, a spectator decides, oh, if I'm going to pay for one show, I'm going to go to this show. This show is garbage. Like, I'm not spending money. Yeah, and, and I think it, you're right. You, like, it was a competitive advantage to have, and it differentiated us from them, absolutely. I think, yeah, and, and I think for me what it came down to ultimately, and again, I still was like the soldier. I wasn't the president or I wasn't trying to be a co-partner, et cetera. But um, I think for me what came down to was, yes, it, 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 we specifically outlined anything within like three months of our show in the same cities that we were doing. We made there was some out clause that allowed them to do other shows because we didn't fully want to reserve their ability to choose for everything they were doing. So um, I do recall that. And, and yeah, Tony, Tony really. Um, I think he doubled down on his advice during that car ride. And really when we, he took us to the event, we eventually got to step correct in Philadelphia. They had this amphitheater venue and it had like, it was crawling with people. It was like, uh, oh, I want to say 2000 people at this event, like crawling. And, and, and I remember him saying, he's like, if you do what I'm, you know, if you do, uh, get teams on contract you can have a show like this and he kind of like almost like gave us a vision of the future um you know and, and i remember that all connecting for me do you remember the philadelphia show at all or like the actual event i do remember the philadelphia show uh pretty vividly um i remember going on a ride with him um i remember being concerned for safety because of the amount of people that were out there and it was just it looked very like the wild wild west and uh anyway the point is is that yes i remember the show i don't remember the com uh I don't, I don't i don't remember the conversations in the car honestly i'm glad you do but but basically yeah so he gives us the idea to put him on contract and then once i i hear that i'm like all right yeah we got to do that so we go ahead and set up a meeting a very special meeting at this bar restaurant called Rosie O'Grady's. I believe it's in the 42nd Street area. We were going to provide like a uh, brunch for everyone that attended. So we were trying to roll out the red carpet to all our special teams. In terms of who was there, I remember LUL being there. I remember Sigma Lambda Upsilon being there. Uh, can you help me remember uh, Lambda Sigma Upsilon too, I think was also yes. there. Mm -hmm. Omar, I remember thinking, I, I think I see a vision of Omar there. Yeah, he was there. He had opinions. Um, uh, uh, Omega Phi Beta was there, as, ah. as, as you remember. Uh, Lambda Tau Omega was there, too. Because, uh, yes. again, even though they hadn't yet performed in our show, we had already identified that they were an up-and-coming. And, and they were a big New Jersey uh, organization as well. Right. So um, we, we basically have, what, how many teams? Like maybe eight or nine teams there yeah, at, that's at, at this meeting? Assume. Yeah, we so we go out, we roll out the red carpet, we want to we pay for brunch, we have I think we invited two people per team just so to limit our ex expenses I think. And we and you know, again, we're we're like a mom and pop shop, so we don't I don't know how we had money, but we paid I think the bill was over $1000. I want to say it was definitely over $1000. Um so the purpose of this brunch was to a let them let these teams know and I remember I spoke um I don't know uh, if anyone else spoke. Uh, do you yeah, know who it was? It was just you. Us, I, I was you there. You introduced me, but you did all the speaking. Okay. So it was just me and you, though. We were the only like leaders there. All right. 
so yeah, you know, we, we gather them there. We we basically make them the pitch. Say, like, hey guys, you know, we care about you guys. You guys have been in our shows for all these number of three or four, three or four years. You know, there there are competitors now in Latino Greeks, and you know, we need to protect our assets. And what we're asking is for some loyalty. And and you know, I'm I'm paraphrasing. And basically, what we're asking for you guys to do is to you know come into contract with us so that you know you don't compete in their show because then there's no there's no advantage there's no di uh differentiation between shows if if the eight teams and our shows perform in their shows then what's the difference there is no difference so we were asking it was a hard ask you know it was it was a difficult thing to ask but we needed to do it to for our businesses to survive you know like and uh I remember a few teams were like, yeah, I, very few were like, yeah, sure. I think that makes sense. And you might remember who, but what the, the, the dagger in my heart was when our own uh, step team wasn't comfortable with that, which made no fucking sense to me whatsoever, how that, that doesn't make sense. But I think we even offered them to like pay for like their, pay for everything. We, we, we were gonna pay for their travel. We were gonna pay for their clothing. We, we were going to sponsor the Lambda Upsilon Lambda step team everything. Because A, we got love for the organization, obviously, and we want to see them win. But then they were like, and I, I remember who the person that the, the leader was. I'm not going to, I'm not going to out him. I so I got love for him, but I remember him saying like, nah, man, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. And in my mind, I was like, dude, this this really makes sense yeah, yeah I, I think for from my lens um coming into that meeting because we i remember you and i we talked about that meeting before we had it like it was very uh, orchestrated very we wanted to make sure that we got our message across very distinctly it was a critical meeting it was gonna it, it could have made or break and make or break us i mean it I don't, I don't, I, I can't tell you now the trajectory of, I don't even know if people signed those contracts. I'm sure some people did sign. I remember printing a contract. I remember looking at a contract. I remember passing it around. And I remember, and we, yeah, we had contracts right then and they were like, all right, you ready to sign? Let's go. Like thinking that people were going to like, and some people might have signed. Like, I don't remember. Do you? Yeah. So, um, and, and kind of to, to take a step back. So I remember that our goal above anything <laughs> at that meeting was to get four teams on contract and, and not just any four teams. It was the four teams that we knew make the people come out. <laughs> so um, uh, LUL was in there. And I remember okay. what you're saying that they didn't sign and they weren't even going to be convinced. Yeah. Who, who were the four teams that we needed? So LUL, Omega Phi Beta, LSU, and it was another sorority. I want to it say. must have been SLU. SLU, yeah. It was the four that we thought yeah. were bringing the most people to our yeah. events. Yeah. So I, re I, I, my recollection was that Omega Phi Beta was with it. I, th I think they were like, yeah, we'll sign. I think they were the only ones. Right. And that's that's yeah. They Jessica Morales, uh, aka Remo. She 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 understood loyalty to a t at that point <laughs> we'll talk yeah. about years later what happens but at that point she was right. beyond with so us beyond after that meeting my my memory is hazy i i other than that that's i remember that's what i remember but what so what 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 proceeds to happen after that is this so then after that you and i we we split up the teams that attended and we start pursuing the contracts because as you mentioned maybe two teams like omega phi beta and lambda tau omega like they signed on the spot so they were with us from the jump like those two i'll never forget those two because they signed on the spot but then it was the other the other six and particularly the other two lul lsu that didn't sign at that moment that we had to really i, re I remember omar though being open to it like he wasn't like adamantly no do they eventually sign Yes. So LSU does sign. LUL does not. So we, 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 we come out of that with two out of the four teams we wanted to sign. Um, Let me tell you that I don't I, I this stuff, you know, when we talk about it, I remember things. But like 
the fact that we we so the fact that we were able to get teams to sign number one was very difficult very hard ask but once those teams sign and our competitor you know greeks realizes that teams are signed they're like they're fucked they're like fuck like what we might as well go out of business like this none we got to stop doing shows because this is it we, now we got to do shows in like gainesville florida because we can't do a show in new york if you can't do a show in new york then you can't exist because this is where all the teams are at yeah so i, I think there's an appropriate segue into latino greek shows because so after so this is the fall of 2001 now that we're talking about latino greeks has a tour a college tour that they're selling to the u.s army and it's sponsored so there's lead generation expectations there's there's you know volume of attendance expectations coming in and what anthony and i proceed to do is we look at their tour which they lay out nicely on their website you know gainesville new york and uh there's this third city um oh texas somewhere in texas and uh and so we start by second we're like all right let's get to the gainesville show so that we can market a future show of ours and also wear our our latino step apparel and sit in the front row and, and and show them you know show the audience in florida who yet may have not known us because we hadn't done a show there yet um, let's build some awareness for who we are at their event at their expense so we show up to that event uh, new york we don't show up to that or maybe you went to it but i didn't go and at new york what we decide to do is we instead of going to the show we start pulling the teams out of the show <laughs> that so when we see on their website that they announce the lineup for the teams what latino greeks ends up doing is essentially flying in teams from different states to perform in their shows and you can imagine that's not going to bring the right attendance oh, i totally forgot about that dude yes so because we had the teams on contract they couldn't have the best team they had to bring these uh low level uh, only you know lesser teams that were not that great to new york which added to their expenses which is not good for profitability uh not good for business and all throughout in the background i'm sure and i the icaramba ceo which now will be named mr david chattel uh yep yeah, you gotta put should we put some respect on his name um oh, always always <laughs> That's a little too much, but okay. Um, Dave Chattel must be thinking to himself, like, we must, I, I think, you know, like, and, and I, we have to like acquire these guys, but I would think that we were so small, like, even the word acquisition sounds like really out of place. Like, you don't acquire this little, this, all they do is these little shows, like, you know, like, acquisition is a, a big word for, I think, some things that we were doing, but all these steps that we did strategically and because don't tony martinez had given us planted the seed really helped us to a maintain our uh dom not dominance but maintain our position as the number one latino greek event period in new york let's just say let's say new york um so now Dave Chattel, again, all these things are helping behind the scenes, which, I, which uh, us, unrealized, us not even realizing it are leading to our acquisition. Because if they can't beat us, then you have to, they have to join us. Yeah, and, and to Anthony's point, we were convinced to be a thorn in their side at, 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 at every turn. Like the more they did step shows, the more they aggravated us. And so we, we used our anonymous guest book to our advantage. Uh, we had a lot of Greeks logging in there thinking that those Latino Greek shows were ours. And we wanted to distinguish they were not ours. So Anthony and I start anonymous posting on our own guest book. I can say that years later about the Latino Greek events and saying, oh, it was garbage or it was trash or, or we attended because we were physically there in Gainesville. So we saw so we knew kind of where the pain points were and we were Hold on. before to... you get to Gainesville though tell us about limelight which one came first in limelight in New York no Gainesville first followed ah. by limelight second so 
I don't remember the Gainesville show at all. I, I remember being there. I don't remember like what was happening, but do you remember that? Yeah, oh, absolutely. wait a minute. We missed the show. Didn't we miss the show because we were tired from driving? No, 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 not, not Gainesville. Um, I, I remember being there distinctly. Um, and, and let me, let me talk about it. So, so what happened is again, I, I flew into Georgia where Anthony lived and we decided we were going to drive down to the Gainesville event, you know? So it was one of the fun car rides where we, you know, really, again, continued our business conversation and figured out what do we got to do next year? What do we got to do with sponsors? What do we got to do with teams, et cetera? So we did a lot of like planning. Down we, that on the drive, we were listening to uh, uh, Hot Boys Guerrilla Warfare album. That's a, that's a uh, classic. A whole bunch of Tupac as well. I remember Hit Him Up. I remember all of those classics. Um, and uh, and we get to Gainesville. We get to the parking lot. I, I believe we had flyers for Latino Step, and I believe we started putting them on car windshields, you know, before the event, figuring, oh, people are going to hear about us. We're going to use this event to market the, the shit out of ours. And um, we get to the venue. We get inside. I remember we strategically picked seats right in front of the stage because our shirts were wearing these black uh, shirts with Latino step on the front, Latino step on the back. And, um, and we, we were going to stand up throughout the show. So we want people to see our brand on, you know, at the event. And, um, and it was, it was, it was a mild turnout. I want to say there were about 300 people at the actual event. Uh, they had about six or seven teams of the local team. So they had a good, group to perform um and ultimately if i don't if i remember the sequence correctly anthony i think you ended up speaking to frank at some point because you had known him he hadn't known who i was dave chattel didn't know who i was at that point and so you ended up speaking to frank i remember dave chattel being there though yeah because i was like who's this white guy at the door and why is he like sucking on a lollipop chupa choops chupa yeah. choops was one of the, was their sponsor I don't know if people remember Chupa Chup lollipops. They're still out there. I see them every now and again. But I remember after your conversation with Frank, you came back to your seat and you talked to me and I, and I was just like, who's that? Like, what is, like, what do you guys talk about? And you told me that Frank told you <laughs> that, you know, just give me some time. We're going to figure out step shows. Like, you know, like I'm going to, you know, sell out events just like you. And I remember you telling me that and that, really like infuriated me that he had the arrogance <laughs> to, to think that way. Yeah, he was arrogant. He was a cocky motherfucker. <laughs> that guy, that guy we can, uh, we can trash every now and again, but, uh, but yeah, so, so, so that show. And then, as I mentioned, next up the limelight in New York city, we, we didn't attend that, but we did pull teams out of that. So it became a, a shit show and a cost cost nightmare for them. And we were really, sowing the seeds as anthony mentioned for acquisition yeah we're, we're gonna have to uh pause this episode and because we have another meeting to go to and someone waiting in the waiting room so we're, 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 we're gonna pause episode what is it three, three? Mm -hmm. and then we will pick it up next time thanks cool. for joining us one love